Hey guys, how's it going? It's Travis Schwartz with the Forest Hill Film Lab. And uh, today I'm going to take some time and talk to you guys about a new camera I got a few months back. Um, it's a little bit quirky. It's something that um, you know you, you wouldn't normally find in a thrift store or something like that. Um, it's actually a half frame camera. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, you know half frame photography, what's cool about half frame photography, and uh, I'm going to show you guys some photos that I've taken with this camera to kind of uh, illustrate some of the things that's possible with a half frame camera that you wouldn't really do with any other camera in photography. So um, I'm going to dive into this video, talk to you guys a little bit about the Olympus Pen F, and then um, kind of share with you guys, like I said, some of my photos I've gotten with it and just some of, my, some of the insights that I've gained uh, from using it for the past few months. So uh, let's dive into this camera and we'll see what we learn about it. So back in the, the 50s and 60s, um, Olympus was a, a really popular camera company and one of the things that they always specialized in was compact cameras and subcompact cameras. So I don't know what it was about Olympus's you know, business, but they decided that they were going to kind of tackle the small camera market. So while everybody's out there making, uh, you know, big clunky 35 millimeter cameras, Olympus was kind of going the other direction and they were trying to make the smallest cameras that they could. The, you know, the jacket pocket kind of uh, camera and, um, you know, all, all kinds of fun stuff like that. So, um, you know, as of recently, I kind of started to fall in love with these small Olympus cameras because, you know, some of these cameras really pack a punch. They they have the optics that they need for good photos. They have the exposure control that they need for good photos. And uh, many times they have a focusing system that works excellent. You know, whether it be a rangefinder system or uh, in this case, this is a, actually an SLR. So um, basically I have had this little Olympus half frame camera that I found at a thrift uh, or a swap meet. And so... I was shooting half frame with that for a year or so and it was cool and I really did like the results but it was a zone focused camera and you know I'm really I'm really picky about my photos if it's not sharp it's not good so um, being that it was zone focused it wasn't always sharp and so you know my results from it were kind of you know varied I might have one sharp image one soft image so um, you know but I kind of knew still that there was something I loved about half frame photography and I kind of wanted to expand on it. So um, after looking into different models, the Olympus Pen F is kind of the end all be all half frame camera. Um, this is not the only, but this is one of the very few um, half frame SLRs. So what that does is it allows me to focus through the lens actually. And then um, when I take the photo, there's a, a mirror and a curtain and it will, um, you know, take the photo with my desired subject in focus. Now, like I said, my last camera was zone focus. I was basically just saying seven feet, 15 feet, uh, I'd stop down and it was, um, you know, it, it was pretty sharp most of the time actually. But with a camera like this, it actually allows me to shoot with a wider aperture. And what I really love about it is it allows me to change my focus from frame to frame and therefore um, highlight some different subjects. So, um, you know, throughout this whole video, I'm actually gonna be throwing some photos up, basically over me talking, so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. So, you know, sometimes if, uh, you know, you're sh the thing about half frame is that they're all vertical frames that are half the size of a 35 millimeter frame. So when I started shooting half frame, I wanted to, sh I, I kind of just only thought of it in pairs. I, I, that's kind of like where my mind stopped at and I really just thought, okay, shoot one photo, shoot a second one that matches. Shoot one photo, shoot a second one that goes with it. Um, and so I was out there shooting diptychs all day long, taking, you know, pairs and pairs and pairs and, and didn't really let my mind go further than that. And then for some reason when I got this camera, it immediately, you know, triggered in my head that hey, I could do I could do panoramics with this camera. I could shoot four or five frames, and kind of cover the scope of a scene, which is unusual. You know, you can't really do that with a 35 millimeter. I'm not going to stitch them all together. Um, I'm not going to go put them in Photoshop and make a panorama. 
but with this half frame camera, I could just scan the strip, however many frames long, it will, and it will actually, you know, almost do the panorama for me. So that really excited me. And once I started diving into that, uh, my half frame photography really started to take off. It really started to come, become more exciting. So um, here's a couple examples of, you know, panoramic shots. And sometimes, you know, since I am scanning the film myself, Sometimes I would even do a three-frame pano um, with, like I mentioned before, um, focusing on different subjects throughout the image. So there's one I took in particular that was of the um, repair shop across the street from my work for airplanes. So I took two frames of the building and then like one frame of the flag. And in doing that, I was able to change my focus for every single segment, therefore making the whole entire panorama sharp instead of a 35 millimeter standard frame where you would have to focus on one distance only. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this half frame photography has really started to excite me and because it, it gives me the option to do something new with my camera that can't really be replicated by any other camera. You know, you, you're not gonna take your Nikon F and shoot it vertical and be able to scan all the images in one swoop. You know, it does, just doesn't work out the same. Um, so anyways, that's my kind of my take on half frame photography, kind of what's what inspired me to even buy this camera. And so now that you've heard all that, let me talk to you a little bit about the camera. And sorry, it looks like you could see my breath in here. It's kind of cold, but that's all right. So um, here, I'll actually compare it right here in my pocket. This is, this is the beauty of the half frame camera. Right here in my pocket, I've got my other half frame camera. So... You can kind of see a little difference there. This is the Olympus Pen S. Um, and like I said, it's zone focused. So right here we've got a distance scale and it actually locks at 15 feet and it locks at seven feet, um, which is pretty cool because those are common distances for portraits or, or you know a couple group shots or whatever. Um, the aperture ring is kind of hard to turn. It's in here, which is pretty neat. And then um, right on top, we have our shutter speeds. It's probably kind of hard for you guys to see. Um, this camera goes up to 250th. You know, for you guys, you're three feet away because that's what my focus is set. I'd shoot one, and then I'd shoot one over here. And, and that's my, my diptych. But like I said, with this camera, you're not looking through the lens. So it's a little bit more difficult to line up the horizon. It's a little more difficult to get that perfect panorama. Um, and since, I don't know, since it's so chintzy, it doesn't feel like it's doing anything, really. But it does. It, you know, it does a great little job. Um, but as you can see, you know, after shooting this for about a year, there was um, much to be desired. I, I wanted something more robust. I'm a camera collector. I'm an enthusiast. I don't really like playing around with these toys. I like something that's heavy, takes up some space in my hands, um, has a fast shutter speed, some control. I like having some control. And this just wasn't enough control for me. So moving on to the Pen F, this camera is more my speed. It's a little more familiar to me. I've got a nice, easy to grab focusing ring. I've got an aperture ring that I could actually wrap my fingers around, which, um, you know, I didn't like how frustrating it was. And then um, this right here is the shutter speed knob. It's very easy to see. I could just look down at the camera never be guessing what my settings are. 500-1.8, don't have to worry about it. Um, this here's the self timer. Uh, with old cameras like this, I don't really trust them, so I'm not even gonna demonstrate it. Um, we've got, I don't think any of these are, let me see. Yeah, these buttons here don't, oh yeah. Oh, I was right. So this one here is actually a depth of field preview button. If you're stopped down to 5.6 or whatnot, you can preview. The depth of field. Oh, look at that. You guys got sharper. Who'd have thought? So that's pretty neat. Um, nice, nice square little fun button. And when this thing fires, you could really feel something happening. It's There's a mirror slap, a little bit of mirror slap, a little bit of uh, curtain, you know, clunking over. That's the stuff I really like. Um, it's got a nice robust PC uh, socket over here. The counter is really easy to read. You see it's got a nice rolling counter. This one is like a freaking dial that you, I'm missing the knob on and you have to turn it. It's you, you don't really know what frame you're on with this one. You're just guessing until it runs out. 
Um, this one, you know, the, the other great thing about half frame is that you're getting twice as many frames per roll. So when you're doing those four and five frame panoramas, you know, it, it feels like you're burning frames. It feels like you're really going the distance and, and taking up a lot of shots. But realistically, if you do a four frame panorama, that's the same as two 35 millimeter frames and you got plenty left. So um, because of that, it gives me that freedom to, if I shoot one four frame or five frame panorama with this camera, I'm going to shoot two or maybe three of them. Because at the end of the day, it's only going to take up about eight frames of film. And it's going to help me get to the end of that roll a little bit quicker. Because the, the biggest struggle I've had with this camera is finishing a roll. Because they're endless. Like you can't shoot enough. Um, I haven't shot any like single frames with it. It just seems too foreign for me to just focus. Here's a perfect half frame. I'm going to use that. It's the, the quality, the size of it, it's just not really good enough to be taking single frame images. Um, this is actually the Pen FT, which was made, uh, this is the second version of this camera. This one came with a built-in light meter, which of course doesn't work anymore. Um, and the older pen, the Pen F, it has like a gothic F on here. I'll, maybe I'll drop a picture in here for you guys to see what it looks like. Um, that's like the, the really sexy, you know, hipster looking version. Um, but it doesn't really do anything better. I've heard that the viewfinder is a little more dim. Uh, it's a double stroke to advance it, which is kind of neat. A lot like the, um, the early Leica M3. I've always liked a double stroke, but, um, this one, funny enough, is newer and it's more affordable. So I picked this one up. I, I actually got this whole outfit for like 130, 140 bucks because no light meter. But uh, as you guys know from my Sony 16 video, you don't need a light meter to make images. So I, I probably wouldn't have trusted the light meter if, even if it did work. So when a camera has no meter, it's no sweat off my back. It's just a cheaper camera as far as I'm concerned. So um, yeah, you know, this camera's in good shape. The self timer's missing its little cap. Um, the lens, sometimes it gets bound up a little bit. The aperture, I'm not really sure why but it's doing its job. My viewfinder is actually pretty clean, um, nice and smooth. My friend PA Dave, uh, shout out to PA Dave, he, um, he picked up one of these right after me and uh, his had a little bit of a cloudy viewfinder, so um, something I wasn't really thinking about, something that if you're gonna look into one, keep an eye out for that um, because sometimes it could be cloudy here in the eyepiece and that's very difficult to clean. So. Something to think about when you're um, copying your old buddy Trav and buying the same camera, Dave. Uh, anyway, <laughs> take a look. I'll show you the inside just so you can get... Oh, look it. I'm also missing my rewind knob piece here. So, you know, these are just all little reasons why this camera was cheaper for me. But at the end of the day, it makes just as good of images as one that has all those things. So, um, here you can see how cool that is. It's like a metal... It's actually like a metal curtain. Um, and it's a uh, vertical as you can see and these are just small little frames and like I said Because of that you can burn them up and not really feel too guilty about it. Um, it's kind of hard When you're taking photos like this to share them with people um, You know you go to post it on Instagram and it gets tiny. So I don't know. It's kind of like uh, These half frame images are really I, I get to enjoy them more than anyone else. I get to blow them up and see what they look like and see the detail in each frame and once I get them once I post them online they get so minimized and they get made so small that it's like I don't know you can't really tell how good how good a quality that these cameras are but um, you know if you look at the original files and you guys will see some some larger images here because you're you know on YouTube that the quality is quite good actually and um, it's super easy to use really easy to focus um, it's not too hard to tell what's going on inside the viewfinder, and you know overall these are these are great little cameras. Um, wanted to here I'll, I was going to show you guys this book. This is kind of my book that I go to whenever I am about to review a camera. I kind of go in here just to see when it was made, um, what what's the info on it, what other kind of models have been around it. Um, so figured I'd show you guys this because it's pretty cool. So here is the Olympus pen lineup. So here is um, 
where's my Olympus Pen S? My Pen S is right around here. Oh no, this is a Pen EES. Let's see what's on this last page. Here we go. So here's where Olympus Pen starts. These are some other Olympus cameras. So we've got the Pen S 3.5. So this guy was made between 1965 and 1967. Yeah, that's, uh, these are pretty rare cameras. They, they've only been made for two years total, these particular. And so, uh, let's see what those sell for. Back in 2005, these were appraised at $125 to $160. That's, that's actually pretty steep. I think you could probably find these for a little bit less than that now. You could probably pick one of these up for about $100. Bucks. And then we'll go to the next page here. And we've got the Pen F Gothic. 63 to 66. Um, this is the first 35 millimeter half frame SLR. Maybe I was right. Maybe this really is the only one. I'm not. I, I don't like to say things so definitive like that if I'm not totally sure. But I, I kind of felt like there wasn't any other ones out there. Um, and then here we go. The Pen FT made from 66 to 72. Uh, comes with meter, single stroke lever, and self timer with a 1.8 38mm lens, that's what I've got. Uh, the black is four to $600, and chrome is very common, two to 300 bucks. And uh, you know, realistically, that is probably what you would be spending today. Um, I got a little bit lucky finding this kind of beat up one on eBay for 130, but when I was looking at putting them together, it's like to buy the lens was 120 bucks, and then to buy the body was 120 bucks. Or you could maybe find a complete outfit that would be 160 or 180. So um, you know, it's like who cares? At the end of the day, it's like if you want to shoot half frame photography, you could go out and buy the best one. I mean, this is truly, truly the best half frame camera that you can buy because it's one of the few cameras that you could focus through the lens, which you know is always ideal. You could always get your focus perfect if you're looking through the lens. So. Um, you know, 180, 200 bucks for the best half frame you could get. It's it's hardly an investment. So, um, anyways, that's pretty much all I've got to say about this camera. Um, I'm gonna you know sign off and we'll we'll talk about what we'll see uh, see next video. So, um, like I like I said in my last video, I am really trying to make an effort to kind of be more present here on YouTube. Um, this morning I was looking through some of my old videos just to kind of see what videos got a lot of uh, views, which videos got a lot of uh, feedback, and I mean, I noticed that pretty much all of my camera review videos were my highest viewed videos, so I just kind of took a lap, actually I didn't even get up, I was just sitting at the kitchen table, I looked up at my shelf, and I saw, hey, the, the Olympus pen, I haven't talked about that yet, so um, hopefully you guys like this, hopefully that you, you guys dig the camera reviews as well. I figure these are great videos because they apply to any photographer and they kind of open up your eyes into a, a camera that maybe you haven't seen before or you haven't thought about purchasing before and maybe you would like to. Um, so anyways, thank you guys for listening. Uh, I'm going to try to get back in the dark room pretty soon here and maybe do a video on you know some sort of dark room techniques, maybe... Um, you know, special darkroom printing you could do with with or without an enlarger. Um, so we'll see. I'm gonna try to keep on the keep on the grind and keep the ball rolling. So um, I appreciate you guys watching, and I really really appreciate all your comments. Um, it's been so awesome getting to reply to you guys and see some of the awesome things you've had to say. So thank you. Um, and if you're not subscribing yet, uh, you know, go ahead and subscribe now. I, I never never seem to remind you guys to do that. You guys just do it on your own. So, um, but I, here I am. So. Subscribe. Uh, I'm going to try to keep putting videos out and, uh, you know, keep this thing going. So until next time, you guys, thank you so much for watching and keep on shooting.